What's up guys, Silver here with another Halo Master Chief Collection Achievement Guide. This time we are finally diving back into CE Lasso. There's a lot of new strategies that the community has found. There's a lot of new things that I've found as well. So we're going to compile as many of those as we can into a much easier, much easier to follow and execute guide for completing this whole campaign on Lasso, the hardest difficulty imaginable for Halo. So here we are. Uh, we're going to talk about the uh, skulls here real quick. And one thing I should mention is, right off the bat, you should not set up your own campaign session. You actually have to complete the playlist that's already set out for you. So go to the playlist section and then go to the Lasso campaign and select that. It'll be set up for you. It will have 12 skulls on, and those 12 are Black Eye, which means shields will only recharge when you melee an enemy. And the behavior of Black Eye in CE is it will automatically fill your shield up all the way instantly when you melee somebody. So it doesn't just start recharging when you melee somebody. And then Boom Skull, that is the explosion radius, will be twice as large. So frags, plasma nades, rockets, anything that has splash damage, so banshee bombs are included there as well. Those will have twice the explosion radius, so they will be much bigger. You'll have to be much further away in order to not, you know, take any damage from those. And then Fog means no radar, which is not that bad. Eye patch auto-aim is disabled for all weapons, and that may only affect console players on Xbox. I'm not sure if there's any auto-aim at all for the PC side. Foreign makes it so you can't use any Covenant weapons. Pretty annoying. It cuts the sandbox in half, basically, and makes it a lot tougher. Famine means weapons dropped by AI have half the ammo they normally would. Grunt Birthday Party is a non-issue. That just means grunt headshots lead to glorious celebrations. So there's a big cheer from a bunch of kids, and a bunch of confetti pops out of grunt's heads, which is pretty great. And then Grunt Funeral, the opposite of Grunt Birthday Party, I guess, is grunts blow up when they die, which is actually pretty beneficial if you use it uh, carefully. And then Iron is one of the most annoying ones when uh, one person dies when you're playing co-op. It actually sets both of you back to the last checkpoint, and when uh, you play solo, it's even worse. It sets you back to the beginning of the level when you die. But this is easily workaroundable, which is not a word. But basically, whenever you die, just hit pause, and then go to save and quit, and then when you get back out to the lobby, just resume the playlist, and it will set you back at your last checkpoint. Malfunction. Every time you respawn, a random element of your HUD is disabled, so it could be your targeting reticle that you can't see, it could be your health, shield, ammo, grenades, etc. So not as bad as the blind skull, which just takes away everything, uh, but you might want to go into a custom game, a custom multiplayer game, before you start up this uh, playlist and go and get some uh, tape, and you could actually put a little piece of scotch tape, a little piece of see-through tape, make sure it's not going to damage your monitor or TV or whatever, and then you can kind of trace your uh, targeting reticle. Pick up a sniper in the custom game, and then you have a kind of a tiny circle in the middle of your screen. Put a little piece of see-through tape, clear tape over that, and then you can kind of trace the targeting reticle onto the tape, so then when you go into campaign, if it happens to take away your targeting reticle with the malfunction skull, you'll have the uh, makeshift reticle on your screen still, so it will be a lot easier to target and kill all those enemies. So, next goal, Mythic. Enemies have increased health. And then the last one is Recession, which means every shot is worth twice the ammo, so unfortunately that does not mean twice the damage. If you shoot your pistol once, it will take two bullets away from you, and it will only do the damage of one bullet. So, and you may have noticed by now that I'm using the original graphics for this playthrough. That is because it makes it a lot easier to see the actual geometry of the level. All the rocks, the trees, the walls you're trying to shoot around those are a lot easier to actually see where exactly they begin and end in the original graphics. The anniversary graphics, although pretty, uh, are not always 100% faithful to the actual geometry. So sometimes you feel like you're shooting something and you're actually shooting a wall or something or the edge of a rock or something. So we're going to stick to the original graphics. And then lastly, before you set this up, you want to turn on competitive scoring because that will enable you to see when you're killing enemies. So we're going to spawn up in the middle of this room, and we're going to turn to the left, and there's going to be a door over here in the corner, so stand by this. It will open after a couple seconds. Go through, hop over the pipes on the left, and then we're going to go down this hallway. Once we go through this doorway, we want to slow it up, because there's going to be an explosion on the right side of the end of the hallway there. We want to avoid that, and then we're going to move through this doorway, but then we want to turn around and get back into that hallway that we just came from, because there's going to be a giant explosion in that room, and normally... Uh, it will not hurt you really, but since we're on lasso, the boom skull is enabled, so it will significantly damage you, so you want to avoid that by just cutting back the way you came for a little bit. And then we're going to wait for those doors to close with the elites firing out of it. You'll probably be able to make it down this hallway without getting shot, but there is a chance you'll get a stray bullet in the back while you're running, so might as well just wait for those doors to close. Same thing here, but I decided to just run uh, over these guys, just run past them. They're fighting the enemies on the right. We're going to keep going. There's another battle up here. There's some uh, Marines here fighting some enemies behind us now, and we're just going to ignore the fact that they're there. They don't really shoot at you or target you, but you might take a stray bullet or two, so just something to note. And then once you get to this point, you could either back up or head all the way to the bridge to trigger the cutscene, and uh, we will get an empty pistol from Keys. Thanks, buddy. 
We're going to have to find the ammo as we go. And then you can see here as I'm leaving the bridge, I just wait a couple seconds. Because if you leave the bridge too quickly, the ammo for the pistol won't spawn in this doorway here. So uh, I just waited a couple seconds, grabbed the ammo for the pistol. And then just kind of wait at the edge of the doorway here. And then just poke your head around. And that grunt usually moves up and kind of just stands there. So you could poke your head around the corner. Shoot him with a headshot, he'll die, and then he will explode and kill the other two grunts probably. So just wait to hear those three grunt explosions uh, from the grunt funeral skull. Walk through, grab the assault rifle, and immediately go to this part of the room. You can either run past the enemies directly, or you can just wait here for a couple seconds. The enemies will move up. Sometimes they see you and will come uh, try to melee you or something, but you can just kind of walk past them and uh, melee them yourself to get your shield back up. There's more ammo uh, right here on this rack. So grab that, you should have full AR and Magnum at this point, and there's a health pack on the wall. So we have full health, shield, Magnum, and uh, AR at this point. And then we're going to melee this guy in the back. We're going to pull out our pistol, and we're actually going to headshot these three Marines. And the reason we're doing this is because they like to drop frag grenades a lot of the time. So pick up any grenades they happen to drop. Sometimes they drop a few, sometimes they don't drop any at all. But we're going to move up to the right side here along the wall and we're going to look over here at the grenades uh, going off and blowing up those marines there's going to be a couple grunts that come out of the doorway there and we're just going to headshot those guys just slowly uh, kind of pick out their heads and shoot them with the magnum and you'll be able to have a chain reaction uh, start up with all the grunts blowing up and then killing more grunts and then those grunts will in turn blow up and it will kill most if not all of the enemies in this section so you want to look at the dead marines that were blown up because they may have more grenades in the corner here so it looks like uh, we got one right here. So pick that up, and we're going to move forward. If any enemies survive that, they will move forward into this hallway that I'm looking at right now. And then we're going to uh, poke our heads around here, and there's going to be one grunt and one elite. So I'm going to try to headshot the grunt in this area, and that will get the uh, explosion to occur, and that will take down most, if not all, of the health of the elite. So it took down most of the uh, shield and health from the elite there, so I finished them off with a magnum. More magnum and assault rifle ammo on that rack there. So we can move to the next section with full health, shields, and ammo. So we're going to move forward now, getting the overshield, and uh, cut back the way we're supposed to be going here. Move through this hallway. You could use some grenades if you want to, um, but I really advise saving your grenades uh, for a tougher part of the mission. So I'll show you uh, when we get there. I'm just going to kill these Marines as well. You could wait for the Covenant to kill them, so you don't risk uh, any of the friendlies turning against you. But I like to just uh, take these guys out really quick. The reason I do that is because uh, they could die and drop grenades. But if the Covenant happened to throw a grenade at them, it will just set off a chain reaction and those frag grenades will blow up as well. So you won't be able to use them. And I've never seen this Marine walk down that hallway. I got a little scared. I thought he might have turned against me. But we're good. And unfortunately, I don't think they dropped any grenades over here. But... Uh, that's okay. We'll just take out these Covenant the same way we were earlier. Just kind of poke your head around the corner and locate a grunt, and you'll be able to headshot those guys, and they will take out most, if not all, of the enemies like before. So that's what we're going to do for the majority of this mission, is just kind of taking out those grunts, targeting those guys, and using those guys to take out their bigger, uh, more hostile elite friends. So we're going to poke our head around the corner here, and we're going to hopefully headshot a grunt. Is there a grunt even there? Are you there? Yes, you are. There we go. Okay. So, headshot out that guy. He will blow up, kill the elite. I'm going to go back here and, uh, you know, check for more frags. We look around all the corners. They could bounce uh, in a various amount of uh, directions. So, take a look around. Doesn't look like there's any, though. All right, we're going to move back here. And you want to take this hallway cautiously. Uh, but before we get there, there's going to be some uh, ammo on the ground there. You can see those packets look like Nutrigrain bars or something. Those are the AR and Magnum ammo packets. There's also the health pack on the wall. And I like to stand in this corner for a little bit because it's weird how uh, CE explosions operate. You need to be close enough to them. And uh, for some reason, in this mission in particular, uh, you have to be pretty close to some of them. So I stand at that corner um, to make sure that any dead grunts do explode before I just walk right into them and get blown up and killed. So we're going to watch these guys die. And hopefully they drop some frags. I don't think they do, if I'm recalling properly. But we could just kind of poke our head around the corner. We do have three grenades, so um, it's not that big of a deal for them to not drop any more for us. Three should be plenty. And we're going to just headshot the grunts like we've been doing. Just take your time. There's no rush. It's not a speed run or anything. And we're going to poke our head around the corner. Looks like someone is still alive. And I'm missing shots. They're lobbing grenades. But we're good now. Okay, so I think everyone's dead over here. We're going to move forward. And we're going to kind of uh, do the same thing we're doing uh, in the past. There's a bunch of elites and grunts up ahead here. So just kind of poke your head around the corners. Take your time. And you'll be able to get them to start a chain reaction. Um, the grunts will die. 
they'll blow up. Kill more grunts, they'll blow up. And also, uh, there's a bunch of enemies that could be dropping grenades. So the elites and grunts, as they die, um, before they even blow up from the grunt funeral skull, they uh, could actually drop more grenades on the ground too. So you could really get a big chain reaction going sometimes. Um, and to clarify what I just said, the elites do not explode, just the grunts. More ammo on the ground there if you need it. And there's going to be some OS, some overshield down here at the end of this uh, boarding craft. And it looks like I can't pick it up because I actually have some still left over from the previous overshield I picked up. So you can't see my uh, shield right now because of the malfunction skull. But we're going to make sure we have full overshield and I'll show you how we could do that before we move to the next section. So kind of hang out behind the barricade here and the uh, grunts will kind of pour out into the hallway there. So just kind of wait for them to slow down and uh, just stay still for a second so you could easily land a headshot uh, so you don't draw attention to yourself too soon. And then you could kind of, uh, it's, it makes it a lot easier to just headshot them when they don't know you're there yet. So just wait for them to stop moving and then you can headshot them. And then once you kill all the enemies down at the end of the hallway there, this blue elite likes to pop out of the uh, doorway there. Sometimes he runs uh, down further and pops out another doorway, but he will be coming out from the right side every time once all those initial enemies at the end of the hallway are dead. But you can see right now I just jumped in the fire and I'm letting this slowly take down my shield and that way I could grab a fresh overshield. You want to make sure that you don't uh, take any health damage, obviously. But you could actually, even if you can't see your shield, you could tell when it's about to run out because you'll get that audible alarm that lets you know that your shield is low. So just kind of do that until your shield is low enough where you could grab an overshield. And then go grab a fresh one, go grab more ammo on the ground there. And uh, there's more magnum ammo uh, right here in front of us here. There's that gun on the ground by that dead guy. So grab that. There's more health on the wall if you need actual health. And then we're just going to continue on with full stats basically. Everything is full except for our frags. We have three of four, but that's okay. We're going to move up these stairs in the middle of this room, but we want to spend as little time in this room as possible, so we want to jump up to the stairs here and then jump over to the ledge on the left, and that way we could kind of uh, just bypass all those enemies. There's a lot of Marines helping you out in there, so the Covenant are distracted by those guys, so you could hopefully make it out of that room uh, unscathed for the most part. You'll probably take some damage, but you could probably make it out of there without dying. And then we can move forward here, and then like we've been doing the whole time, we're just going to headshot the Grunts, which will take out hopefully all of the Elites as well. And there's some magnum ammo on the ground here. You can see that dead guy. And there's more magnum ammo up here. So you should have plenty of magnum ammo to work with in this section. And we're going to move forward. There's going to be three grunts in this dark area over here. And it looks like they're charging my position. I'm just going to leave and back up because they are throwing grenades. And I do not want to be anywhere near that when it goes off. So kind of reset. Don't uh, be afraid to just run away and then come back once they are... I think they killed themselves, actually. Sometimes they'll do that, so that's good. This is the section we wanted to save the frag grenades for, but I'll show you the ideal way to do it without grenades. You want to kind of sneak around the corner slowly, 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 and hopefully you could find the grunt first. Um, they're kind of set up in random locations, so they're not always set up like that. It worked out this time. I was able to headshot the grunt, and then the elites kind of moved forward to charge my position, and it blew both of the elites up. That is an ideal situation, which won't happen every time. Um, sometimes the grunt is standing in a different place, sometimes he's in another place, so it's kind of tough to plan for. The reason I grabbed the frag grenades is in case I kill the grunt and the grunt happens to not blow up the two elites, it's kind of tough to close the gap in that hallway because it's a long hallway, there's not a lot of cover. So if you're facing two elites who kind of tend to stay at the end of the hallway, it's tough to kill them uh, on lasso difficulty with no grenades. So we had three grenades to work with there in case that lone grunt's explosion wasn't enough. But anyway, once you get past those two elites and that one grunt, there's a bunch of health and ammo on the ground. You can see that we bypassed on the way here and there's three more grunts at the end of this hallway. You just take them out from far away with the magnum and there's more magnum ammo on the ground. Going here, we're going to take left, left, right, left, right, other directions you want to turn when you're in these tunnels and that will get you to the end. And you can see we're at the end here now. There's a doorway there, but we don't want to go through there. It could be tempting to go try to assassinate that grunt, but we're going to turn right one more time before we get to that doorway. Go through this doorway, go through here, and we're going to wrap around that whole hallway over there where there's a bunch of uh, enemies that so we're going to kind of wrap around, and instead of killing a grunt with a melee from behind, we're going to kill this elite who's standing here. So that's a much better uh, trade-off, I would think. So we're going to go back to this doorway now, and we're going to headshot the first grunt we see. Hopefully he starts a chain reaction that will kill most of the enemies in here that remain, and we got to headshot one more, it looks like. And feel free to back up, change positions if you need to, if you're getting shot too much. Uh, feel free to go to another doorway to get a different angle, because they tend to focus on the last doorway you were at a lot of the time. So if you just change your position, uh, it could work wonders for your, uh, your outcome here. So it looks like a grunt, you can see that explosion was kind of delayed, that's what I'm talking about. A lot of the times, um, in this mission in particular, explosions are delayed. You need to be close enough to them for them to happen for some reason, but... 
We're going to look down here, and oftentimes there's an elite with one grunt, and we'll just take him out. If there's only an elite left, just have just kind of get his attention, and he'll run down the hallway towards you, and you could kind of more easily take him out from close up. And you could always just keep meleeing him, because when you melee him, you get your shield back. So you'll be able to uh, keep your shield up while you're damaging him. But we're going to move forward. There was health pack on the wall back there I grabbed. But we want to just run past this elite and melee him as we go past him so we could keep our shield up. And he's hanging out here more than usual. Normally, he just kind of goes into the area we just came from. So he kind of uh, passes you and you pass him and you kind of just are separate from each other. And you could hide in that doorway that I was kind of hanging out in. And then you'll be able to turn around. Sometimes there's a lot of explosions that occur in that area we came from. So sometimes those explosions will take him out. You can see they're blowing up those grunts in there right now. But uh, this elite is kind of staying too close to us. For him to get damaged so we're just going to take him out ourselves so we're going to start shooting him sometimes he just stands there and take it if you just poke your head just barely around the corner and just kind of shoot him in the shoulder or something whatever's exposed you can see here this time he got angry and is running at us but that's okay like i mentioned you want to just keep meleeing him so you can keep your shield up while his goes down and you'll be able to kind of take advantage of the black eye skull in that regard the grunts in this area should be dead from their own explosions and the ship blowing up in random sections. So we're going to move through the hallway here, and if you don't have full shield at this point, you can take this opportunity to melee this grunt, and then if you duck around a corner fast enough, back the way we came, you could actually avoid taking damage there, unlike I did just then. But you can see I'm pausing here because just around the corner on the right, there's another grunt who died from that first grunt exploding, and that second grunt is now waiting for us to be close enough for the explosion to happen. Like I mentioned... For whatever reason, sometimes you have to be close enough for the explosion to actually occur. So that's an instance where you can move forward too quickly and that second grunt will explode and damage you or kill you. So just be aware of that and we're going to move forward. Looks like all these guys have blown up. So we're going to move uh, into this area because there is actually a health pack. This is actually not the direction we need to go, but there's a health pack over here. So we're going to go grab that and that will help us. And there's more frags over here. So there's more marines and they could potentially drop frags. So now we have four frags. Uh, we don't really need them, but they're helpful uh, if you happen to find yourself in a situation where uh, they would be helpful, obviously. So we're going to move forward, shoot the grunts, and then obviously if we ever come upon a situation where there's elites left over and there's no more grunts to help us take them out, we could always use our frags. I'm saving them because I'm being conservative, um, but we are past the part of the mission where I was saving them for, like I mentioned earlier. So we're just kind of moving forward here, take out the grunts. Maybe I'll decide to throw a couple frags at the end here. Uh, you do get a bunch more frags after this little encounter here in front of us. So you have a bunch to throw at the last batch of enemies and be aware of this hallway. Sometimes there's grunts uh, at the end of that hallway there. I'm kind of wondering where they are. They're kind of uh, off to the side, I guess, kind of hiding in a corner. But be aware of that. You might find you're getting shot from the side and you don't know who it's coming from, but it's probably the grunts down at the end here. Who knows what they're doing? Here's another side hall if you decide you want to take a different angle for these guys. Uh, up ahead here, uh, but they're all dead, so too late for us to do that, but just make sure you're kind of checking your corners. There could be an elite that's still alive that's kind of hiding behind one of these barrels or something, and you could decide to just continue what we've been doing and headshot these grunts. Be aware of the fact that grunts could be propelled towards you before they explode, and then you will obviously want to back up even further, and that's something you want to try to take into account when you're killing these grunts, is you want to try to kill the one that's closest to you, so when he blows up, he doesn't send any of the grunts towards you. He actually sends all the enemies further away from you when he blows up. So no exploding grunts come flying in your direction. But that's it for this mission, folks. Not too many huge improvements to this mission, just a lot of minor things I tweaked. It didn't really need too many tweaks. It's one of the easier missions to start out with. But as we go along, we're going to get a lot more significant improvements for these missions and uh, making them a lot easier. But join me next time when we tackle Halo, which is the second mission of Halo CE. And that is going to be significantly improved from my previous guide that came out five years ago. What was the hardest part towards the beginning of the mission is now significantly easier, so stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching, guys. If you found that video helpful, be sure to click on the scorpion icon to subscribe and hit that bell for notifications. You can also check out some related guides by clicking on the videos on screen, and you can find links in the description for other social media links of mine. Stay tuned for more Halo guides, and I'll see you in the next one.